Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious thing to eat. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Double Feature Podcast, where every week, me and David go back and forth trying to find movies for your viewing pleasures. Maybe you want to have a marathon. Maybe you're just looking for a good pair of flicks to kill the weekend off right. I'm your host, Dean. David, how are you doing? Uh, you know, it's been a while, hasn't it, Dean? It just feels like forever for us. It really does. It really does. Like, the last movies we watched, I kind of just blacked out. So, it feels like feels like a long time. Don't worry, the wait is over. Um, we're finally here. We're finally at two of the biggest blockbusters to ever grace the screen. Not really. Um... Kind of, sort of. This week we're doing... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a very niche uh, pairing this week, but an interesting one nonetheless if you're a Beatles fan. Um, We're doing two movies that are kind of like musical romances. Uh, One one a little bit more of a romantic comedy, one a little bit more of a a weird political film. (laughs) Romantic drama, history, montage, acid trip... Thing. It's kind of, it's all over the place, but, you know, maybe that goes along with the theme. Um, we're doing Across the Universe in Yesterday. Yes, uh, we actually have um, Across the Universe directed by Julie Taymor, and Yesterday is directed by Danny Boyle, and Danny Boyle's done, like, a lot of a lot of stuff. I like him as a director. Yeah, Danny Boyle's so. a prolific director. Very. Um, I guess without further ado, why don't we just dig into these log lines, huh? Yeah, what are uh, what are these movies about? What's the elevator pitch you got for me? the universe a bastard artist gets lost in america after a search for his dad introduces him to his greatest friends for yesterday a near-death bike accident sends a failing musician into fame and fortune when he wakes up in a hospital bed to learn he's the only man left on the face of the earth that remembers the work of john paul george and then comedy ensues it's gonna be great so yeah yeah um so i guess like you know let's just talk a little bit about these movies what are they how do we come across them why are they in these why are we pairing them together i guess so yeah uh, yeah um based solely on that these are probably the only two movies that you could pair like this uh i don't know a little bit yeah yeah you know it's kind of funny because i thought about this and why, like, you see musician biopics all the time. You see movies with the musicians in them all the time. You've even been given the the whimsical the mockumentary about touring musicians. You rarely, in, in my particular memory anyway, rarely do you get the movies that make a musical with the musician's music. Well... Well, these you can both qualify as like jukebox musicals, kind of, because they're using like real songs right. that the actors are performing. But one is very much a fantasy musical, and the other one is almost like um like a backstage musical where the music makes sense as to why it's there. Yeah, and it's it's kind of interesting. It's very interesting because I I do think that. Uh, I mean, if if we want to 
say this uh, up front. I don't know what your opinion of both these movies are, though I would be interested to know. I personally didn't care for Across the Universe, but was very... I, I enjoyed Yesterday a lot. I would I would probably have to agree with you, but I, I still enjoyed Across the Universe. I just liked Yesterday better. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, granted, Across the Universe is one of those movies that kind of I have kind of a nostalgic bend to it because I've saw, I've saw it when I when I like came out and you know I saw it like a couple times. I really enjoyed some of the renditions of the Beatles songs they did, but you know then again it's like yesterday was just a better like more cute like love story. It was you know a lot more it was a lot funnier and things like that. But granted, Across the Universe is a whole other thing (laughs) that i totally forgot it was so you know yeah i'm trying to go through my role my uh rolodex here and i i'm i'm trying to pick out movies that i have done what these movies do where they just use the disc the discography of a famous artist uh the first one that comes to mind is like mama mia using all of abba's songs yeah yeah, that's actually probably a good comparison, right? Yeah. Like, Mamma Mia is the ABBA version of Across the Universe, which is doing the Beatles. Or really, I would say it's more of like the ABBA version of Yesterday, because Across the Universe, is the premise is very loose, I thought. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, whereas Yesterday is much more premise-driven. Uh, I mean, kind I will... of, but in yet. <sighs> sorry, sorry, I'll let you finish your point. Well, I was just only going to qualify that, like, across the universe, at least, I'll give it that it, it feels much more musical-like, so maybe there's some some method to that madness um, in the fact that it's supposed to be looser like this. It does feel a little bit more like a stage play in the way that it, it carries out all of its um, stories of the music. But even still, I, I, I think... There's something to that weakness that I, I would like to get into eventually. But you, you go ahead with your thought now. Well, my, my thought was that across the universe, like I said, it's a more of a traditional musical where people just... there. Here is point A in the story, and these people break out into song and dance to exemplify, exemplify that point in the story. But it's never brought up that they're just breaking out into song and dance for no reason. In Yesterday, it's very grounded, where it's like, why are we hearing these Beatles songs? And it is because this guy is a musician who is performing Beatles songs. Like, we can see why the music is there. And that, it, it's just very weird. And I think that's why I would compare Across the Universe to, like, Mamma Mia, because it's a very traditional music, like, musical film. Yeah. Whereas Yesterday, I don't know of many musicals, modern musicals, where you get a movie like this where you're where all the music is diegetic and people don't just break out into song and dance for no reason that's true i mean like la la lane just breaks out into song and dance for no reason and no one like bats an eye at it whereas in yesterday the it's a music it's a movie about a musician and maybe that's and also why i think i enjoyed yesterday a little bit more is i mean did you notice that like in across the universe it's pretty much song after song after song after song like the moments in which it's just scenes and acting are very far between, not necessarily few, but far between. And then it's like, really they, they bust through the hits constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in across the universe, they're also just using the real like acting scenes to just get you to the next song. Pretty much. To, yeah. <laughs> It is weird because Across the Universe feels like a collection of music videos. Really, it does. And you know what it reminds me of, too? I mean, to even compare it to, to Mamma Mia, but, like, maybe even further in its later uh, content is Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Like, that. Yeah, I, it's, of course, it's, it's Moulin Rouge is a circus the whole time through, and it's is kind of getting away with it in its own right that way. But, like, I mean, not only do we end up going to a literal circus at one point in this movie, but, um, which I will admit was one of my favorite cameos, 
because there's a couple of interesting cameos in here, but I love Eddie Izzard. Very big fan yeah. of his comedy. And um, yeah, that's what it started to feel like after a while. And and I, I do think Moulin Rouge ends up having more of a story to it than this does. There is still a story to this. It's just, and I will admit the A story at least, I think is the most interesting. A lot of the side stuff, especially in the setup, is just like, kind of throw it out with the bathwater but <laughs> a little bit um you know what let's just jump into across the universe because i think we're gonna have a lot to talk about certainly on across the universe so i'm i'm just gonna start this this movie is basically just a collection of music videos like i said yeah granted they're all a very good songs and i think they're all well performed i don't think there's a bad performance of any of the songs right in in the cast well, or in the whole okay, film? so I I'd, I'd have to disagree in in only that the I think one one other difference I found between the two movies is that none of the performances in yesterday I felt like weren't trying to overshadow the original. Whereas in Across the Universe, I felt like at times the original was made to be like some weird overshadowed rendition of the original, which I, why would you try that? Oh, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. Like in across the universe, they were trying to be this big, huge, like giant performance of like Beatles songs that were trying to be bigger than, than like what the actual Beatles songs were kind yeah. of thing. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. And, or like at times switching the genre up and like, it was very musical like in that way but i was like but one of the things that people love so much about the beatles is that it's it originates with the like this very english liverpool blues style that they cultivated and playing in the bars and the clubs that transforms into this very english uh, protest rock view of the world that they technically pioneer too you know they uh, they weren't even there after 69 and into the 70s all of it was at the the cultivation of it in the eight uh the mid to late 60s especially because you know uh george harrison is the first person to bring over the sitar and you know they, they, they i mean they're the beatles they're prolific in that way but, but i just yeah, don't it, i don't know maybe it's maybe it's that but um also i this movie has a very weird thing it's trying to do and i kind of get it but then again i don't so, what you were saying is, you know, the Beatles, they were these, the huge, you know, prolific band. Like, okay, let's be honest. They're the Beatles. You, They have the argument for being the greatest musical act of the last hundred years. Yeah. They, they are in that argument. And their entire career only spanned the 1960s, like, as the Beatles. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think they knew each other in the, the late 50s. Because they played together in high school and all these things. And they toured Germany for a long time, and yeah. that's how they got, like, super polished. I know that. Yeah. But, you know, they, they made their big, like, crossover giant hit, became titans of pop music, and, you know, leaders of the revolution of the 1960s, you know, throughout, like, that 10-year span. And it's... And the movie is trying to do that, because we see the evolution of the 1960s through across the universe and they're dropping Beatles songs throughout and it's almost like they're trying to do a history play as a musical but then they're just using this love story to kind of keep your interest it, a little it's bit it's weird um so I, I I think one thing about the movie that I would critique is that if they had stuck solely with Jude which by the way very on the nose, and I was kind of annoyed by it whenever they referenced it. Oh God! As soon as as soon as you find out his name is Jude, you're just like, okay, when's the song? When's the song? I, Come on, you motherfucker! When's the song? That we know it's coming. Like, I mean, for Christ's sake, at, name him Postman at this point. Any other Beatles song? Or something, <laughs> just like, I don't what's know. your name? Um, oh, I'm a paperback writer. <laughs> yeah. oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine? He his name's Jude. 
and he's not an artist. He's a paperback writer. Honestly, maybe that would have been... On a long and winding road to New York to find his long-lost father. But, you know, I kind of li- I will admit, I, li- I kind of like the artist element, the artist angle, because mm-hmm. it, it made for some interesting, like, background, especially in the apartment when, like, sometimes you would see that he's dr- drawn up on the walls, and it's like, that was kind of interesting. But... That would actually probably have made more sense. I mean, especially when he's going on like this Jack Kerouac style journey in New York City and then through the U.S., which never characteristically felt like what, like if they were trying to parallel something that the Beatles went through, felt very different from anything the Beatles actually went through. Yeah, it it's kind of weird because it feels like the film wants to it because it wants to be a history play right like that's like it wants to be a story about the 1960s and then the music of the beatles is transposed over it and it's supposed to be oh the beatles their music throughout that decade exemplify the decade right yeah. yeah and then you had these weird set pieces where oh yeah there's this bowling alley this guy's at harvard there's all this cool little you know early 1960s quiche then it goes into vietnam and the revolution and then it kind of ends in that whole you know oh the ending of the 60s is finished the milieu you know the hippie movement kind of died out and that's you know it's the 60s i'm curious is this movie supposed to take place from like 62 to to 69 like is this movie supposed to be like seven years long uh i feel like because i think it wants to to yeah something like that because i know like please 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 Came out sixty three, and then their last album, um, which I believe is credited to be "Let It Be," was nineteen seventy. Although they, they had already disbanded at that point, I believe. Yeah. Um, well, and that's I, kind I of just, the interesting. Well, oh, sorry. Keep going. Well, one of the interesting things I think about when retroactively, when I think about this movie, is like, is this just a weird world in which we're singing and appreciating the Beatles when it feels like they don't actually exist in this world? <laughs> a little bit (laughs) well because we have our Jimi hendrix knockoff and we have our janice joplin knockoff in this movie yeah and and there's vietnam going on which another thing too that i always find interesting about this is like kind of goes back to this critique of this movie being too american because the beatles themselves were still quite a british band it's just that they were popular in america yeah but they weren't like the Rolling Stones when they ended up writing about like Vietnam or anything like that. Like, I don't think you would characterize their songs as like protest war songs. More that they were just part of that early onset psychedelia. Yeah, like I actually don't know if the Beatles have like war protest songs in their. The, I mean, they discography. have like. I know, like um, Blackbird, Paul McCartney song. That's supposed to be about the civil rights movement i do know that well Uh, i mean i know there's political stuff in their discography i'm just trying to think of one that's like as on the nose as like fortunate son from credence is there anything like that um i don't think so (laughs) i mean you know they they certainly do have their fair share of like questioning bureaucracy and the system because that was certainly present in england and the movie certainly makes england out to be that grab Mm-hmm. Which is kind of also a disservice, I think, to some of the appreciation. Because the Beatles, especially later in the career with... And Yesterday makes a point of this. With songs like Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields and all these things are very appreciative of their home. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of found that interesting. Is the way that they took this all and made it strictly American. Um I mean, I, I, I kind of get it because I guess Jude is supposed to represent... Is he supposed to represent the Beatles because he comes over to America and he influences all these American people around him? They start singing these Beatles songs. And he's from Liverpool. And, it, and... and he's from Liverpool. And the movie ends with him basically like, hey, I'm going back to England. You know, the band's broke up. I'm done. Yeah, I mean... It, okay, so another so... interesting thing I do want to point out before we move on, Jim Sturgis mm-hmm. uh, returned from twenty one all the way yes. back. Yes, interesting. Yes, 
<laughs> hey man you know th this guy he's he's a fine actor honestly no meme he's actually like i kind of liked him in this movie yeah, ain't gonna I, lie I, I didn't I, I thought jude was a fine guy um an interesting I mean, he's character kind of a shit know. but whatever yeah but i think that kind of makes him a little rascally i like that and the beatles were a little rascally like that you know mm-hmm um, they were very tongue and John Lennon and Paul especially were fairly tongue in cheek and um, I don't know it, it yeah uh, that's kind of a tangent but like I guess to get back to it is what specific where like what point specifically did you start to feel like this thing was kind of an experiment more than an actual um, <laughs> what you would what do it. you what do you mean? Like, when did I feel this move? This wasn't a movie. It was like a. It was like a. When when did are you asking? When did I think the story stopped working, or when did I think the movie stopped being a movie? It was just music videos. Maybe some similar to that, because for me, from the get go, and especially with my mind for when I watch movies, uh, I was expecting from the get go. It's like oh, across because I knew next to nothing about this movie, honestly before going into it other than that it, it was a musical it has a bunch of Beatles songs in it it's a love story um i didn't know it was a period piece i didn't know you know a lot of stuff and from the get-go with the dance scene which frankly isn't that stylized to look like the american 60s mm -hmm. um and then with like the opposite love scene in england i thought it was going to be something where it's like oh the two lovers are going to switch across the universe from each other Mm. so to speak and then it's going to be like this interesting love square that ends up happening but that's not what happened at all <laughs> uh and frankly it, it took me a little while to kind of really follow it because then i'm like okay he's going to america to find his father but that really doesn't play any role in the rest of the movie except for when he tries to get him out of jail later as like a plot it device <laughs> it only plays a uh, role in the fact that it gets him to America. And that's it. Kind of. Which Why are you going I, to America to see my father? You meet you meet your father and he's like, "All right, I'm done." Yeah, and like I get I like the the expired visa immigration thing that they play with. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like why not just say I want to go to America to experience it, you know? And then make it more of a road movie, maybe even. Um, I mean, that could be interesting. Like he's, um, like maybe he's telling his girlfriend, "It's like, hey, you know, I uh, I want to travel the world before you know I settle down with you or something like that. You can come with me." And she doesn't want to, and he's like, "Look, I'm only going to be gone for like three months. I'm just going to go to America and have a road trip to California or some shit." And then you know, nine years later, he comes home. I don't know, man. I guess I don't know. I don't it's... know. But yeah, I, I think it, I think his motivation works. Yeah, because but... like okay, because the sequencing of scenes in that that beginning too, you get the dance scene, the the scene in Liverpool, then you get this cheerleader scene, which I'm like, what is this? And that, by the way, was not a fan of that rendition of "I Want to Hold Your Hand" with like the football practice going on and it being like a marching song. I was like, this is this is <laughs> not it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that's with Prudence, right? Yeah. And and her whole thing is she's um gay, she's coming out of the closet, all that other stuff. I'll say this. Kudos, you know, I think that was a cool like story thing to have, cool character. My god, it was handled so poorly in this movie. <laughs> oh, it completely cuz she literally okay, that's her introduction. We don't see her for most of the movie. Don't see, don't understand how she gets to New York. I almost didn't even realize it was the same person until after the movie was over. And then she disappears. I mean, really. Does she ever come, does she come back at the end? I don't remember. I don't, uh, oh yeah, I think so. But it's like, I don't, again, it's like, I don't even know how she got there. Yeah, okay, so if if you want to know the moment I realized this wasn't a movie, it was just a compilation of the Beatles' greatest hits, was probably... It was probably 
between I want to hold your hand when it's the prudence scene and then I've just seen a face when they're at the bowling alley. Somewhere between between those two songs, I ha I I figured out that this was just an excuse to do a bunch of music videos for the Beatles. That's about then. So like pretty early in the first act, because pretty early in the first act, because um for those who are who are gonna seek this movie out, there's like ten songs in the first like 20, 30 minutes of the movie. Really? Yeah. Because they're just really cranking is. these fuckers out. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's nonstop, and I found that insufferable. I really did. I I, I mean, it was like song after song after song after song. The weird American protest stuff. Like, I get it was part of the American milieu at the time, especially in New York City. But mm -hmm. it just felt shoehorned in after a certain point. Like, especially when Let It Be became this, like, w weird choir rendition, which was good, okay. I, I will admit. I'll, I'll say but... this. that was That's the best song in this movie, is the, is the giant gospel rendition of Let It Be. Best song in this movie. Uh, I don't, I, if I was to say what was the best, Helter Skelter I didn't mind because it was pretty close to the original. Uh, yeah. And, and her voice is good, so I'll give her that. I liked, um, probably not good that I can't remember anything else. It's all being overshadowed by what was done yesterday, so, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Revolution? I think Revolution is the only song in this movie that works perfectly in the scene as almost just being straight dialogue. Yeah. Because, what is it, that's the scene where he goes to the anti-war thing and they're planning to do a bomb, bombing for the police and he's just yelling. And it's he's basically half singing, half yelling at the guy the lyrics of Revolution. You know, it's going to be alright, you know. If you believe in Chairman Mao, you can count me out. All this other stuff. And it's it's so weird and it's like it works really good in the scene that's probably the best song that works as just dialogue in the movie for being like diegetic but like it's also not a great it's it's an okay it's a pretty okay performance song it's a simple song i guess i don't know where i was going with that but yeah there you go yeah let it be is the, mean, the greatest song like, in across come the together universe. come together wasn't that bad either i, I mean it was bad in that I didn't like the way they ended up doing like the whole businessman sequence. You know, I don't know. I, I didn't like most of like the, the music, very over the top musical dance numbers that they end up coming out with. Um, I, I really, I think more than anything, I just like the lyrics to come together. So yeah, that's probably, well, isn't really that Joe it. Cocker performing it? I think so. And, and you know, yeah, I still don't, I, I just was like, I don't know about this one. And, I feel like there's another song that I'm thinking about that was a more emotional piece that maybe was good, but I can't put my finger on it other than that. I mean, I don't know. I just think there was one song in particular, too. Again, I can't really remember which one it was, but that had a very, like, twangy, Americanized, almost like country western feel to it that I was like, this sucks, dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did not like it. But um, Yeah. I, everybody out there in you know movie land we're sorry we're having trouble remembering some of the songs in this in this movie or some of the finer points it's they're over but you have to realize over, though, you know yeah you have to realize the movie is how how long is a crossing it's like two hours right it's two hours long and it's just music videos like imagine just watching two uninterrupted hours of mtv back when they did music videos and that's kind of the movie pretty much yeah uh, and especially like okay, so this is what I, this one I need to bring up because I both did and didn't like it. The Bono mm. cameo. The Bono cameo. Because I like part of me gets the okay part. Of, there's three prongs to this, uh, three times to the fork, if you will. First, it's that I get it. You have to re reference cult activity in America. It's kind mm. of part of the '60s. Is that wait? Uh, was he was the guy who's doing the LSD bus, right? Yeah, but you know, like they're going out the to like a Wallace. commune, and like that's the whole shtick of it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, I remember. Um, second, I get you need your celebrity experience, uh, 
appearances, especially by musical acts. And if you're thinking of any British musical act at the time, Bono's probably going to be your best bet. I mean, he's Irish, though, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. And it probably would have been better to get somebody from Oasis, but I don't think Neil Gallagher was actually going to care much. No. We needed we needed the Gallaghers to come in and just perform Wonderwall. Dude, at the end of the movie, instead of him singing across the universe on top of the fucking building, he sings Wonderwall. Or something. It's like... Uh, that would have just wrong. been insane. I get down to some Oasis, but... Yeah, Champagne Supernova is great. What is it? Uh, what's your story? Morning Glory. That's the name of that album, right? That has yeah. Champagne Supernova, Wonderwall. That's yeah. one of the my favorite albums. Uh, that album is Don't is Look Back banger. in Anger is one of my favorite songs ever. Yeah, that's such for a every one. for everyone out there. What's your story? Morning Glory is a banger of an album. Go and, check that out. You know what? I got a bone to pick too. What's up with these? Like, because you know, there's Rolling Stones, there's Who, there's yada 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 yada. yada. Yeah, yeah, the British invasion, right. Yeah. What's up with these, like, meteoric British bands, namely the Beatles and then Oasis years later, that just are like, eh, we're successful, but I don't think we want to be successful anymore. We're just going to (laughs) quit. Like, what's up with that? I mean, okay, so Oasis is because there was some fucking coke and a lot of drugs, and the Gallaghers fucking hated each other. Yeah. That's why they broke up after three albums. But isn't it the same? The, uh, I mean, I don't know if the Beatles hated each other. Apparent. Well, at the end there, apparently that's what part of what the problem was, is that John Lennon yeah, was particularly I, separated from what the rest of the group was doing. George Harrison was also feeling boxed out by Paul McCartney and John Lennon. Ringo Starr was probably just happy to be there. <laughs> Paul McCartney. <laughs> I, like too, I feel like Paul McCartney, if you look at some of that uh, video, he seems to have like almost outgrown a lot of what's going on. From from everything I have seen from a lot of like the Beatles stuff is like Paul McCartney, I guess, always felt like he had to be the adult in the room, which is weird. John Lennon kind of went down that weird, artsy, psychedelic, I am the voice of a generation, hear me, I'm Kanye West, what's up? And George Harrison was like, bro, I just want to make fucking music. Can we just stop this, like, weird bullshit? Can I just play, like, music and shit? And Ringo Starr was just happy to be there. And also, I hate that the that's the meme, is Ringo Starr was just happy to be there. Like, yeah, Ringo Starr was part of the Beatles. Yeah, and he No had one cares, talent, but he was part but... of the Beatles. Um, I don't know. I, it is interesting because, like, really, when you think about it, what the rest of their music careers became really could have been done within the same medium, and it it makes you wonder a lot. Um, because I would never, I would. Uh, this is also probably like way out of a field to compare, but One Direction's kind of the same way in like a histor- historical sense, where they're mm-hmm. like this hugely popular boy band that is contemporarily meteoric. They get a little yeah. bit of experimentation in, and then all of a sudden they just decide to go their separate ways. And it's like, I don't know, it's it's kind of interesting how that stuff happens. Well, that happens to a lot of um, a lot of bands. It, you know, one of those things where, hey, we've been jamming in, you know, bars and clubs or whatever for, you know, a couple of years. Then we hit a record deal. We suddenly become like, oh, we hit that big blockbuster hit, and we're lucky enough to have more than one blockbuster hit on our album. Then we, you know, find out we can repeat the success, but then, you know, fame, and then we realize being around each other fucking sucks when we have money. You know, I think everybody becomes an asshole when they realize they have enough money to afford a coke habit. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, you were in a band, you would know this. Yeah, but none of us ever, I I mean... (laughs) We, uh, th- I've seen Coke. I've never done it myself. But uh, no, <laughs> no, I mean, no one I, in the band was rich enough to have a Coke habit. That's certainly true. Um, no, I feel like that kind of thing, in at least in the place I was, never successful enough to actually get there. But at the same time, it was not really part of that scene. Um, and if it was, it was peripherally within something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was probably methamphetamine more than anything else. Well, I'm, I'm not <laughs> accusing you of being a fucking druggie. I'm just saying it's like you were in a van, you know, you know the touring life and the music stuff. So I've had I mean, band members that have done coke. That's certainly true. Um, yeah, like yeah, I'm just saying you've like done albums. Like you would be more inclined to say why bands would like. 
how conflicts of bands would work than I. That's true, and and you know I certainly have had conflicts with band members, and it more than often results from certain people just being you know egoistic and and um, kind of trying to live a lie a little bit is a lot of the time how it happens. But in a tangent that gets us all the way back around to why across the universe is a weird experiment. Um, I don't know. I mean, aside from then, a lot of everything else being that the movie does not wrap up well in my eyes. I mean, I really personally, I like a lot of dramatic things happen. I kind of expected what's his face to die. I, I'm a little glad he didn't because he was actually one of the more enjoyable characters. Mm-hmm. Um, that being in Vietnam, I expected him to die. And. No, don't get me wrong, Evan Rachel Wood's character, I kind of thought was being a little bit of an ass. Um, yeah. A little stuck inside of herself and a little bit... Uh, well, I get the motivation being that her brother's in Vietnam, so she wants to fight for her brother. But there's also a part of me that is like, you know, you leave your your artist husband who's actually trying to work for himself and yada, yada, yada. Or not husband, they, they were just together at that point. And then expect, what do you expect? He's just not going to feel neglected when you come home and after he hasn't seen you in like 19 hours or out of the day. You know? Yeah, it's like... Or, or the fact that the people you're hanging out with are like these weird counter, like revolutionary terrorist people. Because like they're making bombs. They're gonna like blow shit up. Which particularly, that was another thing that I caught my eyes. Like her being mad about it. I can understand maybe it's like, yeah, maybe you should just like try and get interested in what she's interested in because it's your best friend and her brother that's over there fighting the war that you should be against. But then it's like when the immigration thing happens, I'm like, oh yeah, wait, that's why she should have been a little bit more careful about all this is because it could literally get her boyfriend sent back to his home country. Yeah. Like it's a thing where it's like, honey, you, you realize your, your boyfriend is like an, like, anything would send his ass back and also he could just like yo i just want us to be like happy can we just you know have dinner together instead of planning the fucking revolution because she just goes deep into that shit like right away like as soon as max gets sent over she is all in on that shit yeah and And it's like a weird character turn too because it i know it doesn't come out of like left field it's explained but it's it's weird there's also a lot of things in the movie that just happened because they happened in the 60s. Pretty much, yeah. Like the, 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 the weird rock band B story that goes on. Mm-hmm. The protests and the civil rights thing that is kind of... Again, that funeral's really shoehorned in there. It really just yeah. kind of feels like... The uh, Let It Be section, like, I'll say this, great, like, best song in the movie, yeah. makes no sense for the story. None. None of the characters are connected to it, so it's like... I No, I think the guitarist is. Oh, really? I, like, the Jimi Hendrix guy is, but okay. it, he okay. never brings it up. But also, the only reason I know that is because I looked at the Wikipedia page. In yeah. the movie, it's never referenced. And admittedly, I get there's, like you want to reference the fact that it's not just about being personally connected. There's a sense of community, uh, communal pain that goes on when in, in those things for the African-American community. And that's important to bring up, I think. Um, but still interesting, especially because again, kind of a Jimi Hendrix character, but not quite. Let's and... be honest. He's supposed to be a Jimi Hendrix parody or he's a Jimi Hendrix knockoff. It's like the but... James Joplin knockoff. It's like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if I like that because we all know it ha- ends up happening, Jimi Hendrix, and it just makes me sad. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't want to get attached yeah. to his character to, to then find out what <laughs> will eventually happen when the 70s rolls around, which is just takes everything that we built in the 60s and flips it on its head in a pile of shit. You know all those great artists that revolutionized the fucking 60s, man, and the voice of a generation? Yeah, they're all dead by 73. 27. All of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, uh, the Beatles are all broken up. Granted, the Beatles, the Beatles, none of the Beatles died in the fucking 70s, but you know what I mean. 
Yeah, I guess. Oh. Well, I, John Lennon died in what? 1981, I think. He died yeah. after Taxi Driver came. No, he died. Yeah, he died in the 80s, I think. 81 or 82. Yeah. I want Keith to say. Moon died in the 70s, though, I think. And that's. Yeah, that. That's fine. I'm sorry, one. Keith Moon. I'm a big Who yeah. fan, so. Oh, the Who is great. Yeah. But. Which reminds me, eventually we'll just have to watch Pod Rafinha. No, nah, dude, we're going to watch Tommy. Oh, God. <laughs> get fucked choose that one instead huh? um, yep. uh, uh, so yeah I don't know I mean I, I, I don't have much left to say about Across the Universe because it, at the end of the day I don't really get this movie I really don't and it's it's interesting for, to admit that but this is one movie that it's like normally I can form an opinion and follow in it and, it, and I really just did not understand most of this <laughs> at all I, I, I guess I mean I feel like I have like an idea of the movie, but it, the other thing is I'm I also just don't have a lot to say about it because I am of the opinion that this movie isn't really a story; it's an excuse. Yeah, it's an excuse to do a bunch of Beatles songs over the history of the 1960s, and like guys, look at this and see how the Beatles songs relates to this, and then do a bunch of music videos. Like that's kind of how I feel about it. I don't. It's not bad. I think you'll get a kick out of it. You'll enjoy it if you like the Beatles. Yeah. That's about, you know. I don't know. But let's get to something else. Yeah. Um, I would argue the more enjoyable movie of the pair is going to be Yesterday, which we will get to right after. This? This. This. Damn it. Dean, I found a great way for us to do something cool and to make a little money on the side. Oh, great. I've been looking for a new place to put my money. What do you got? No investment needed. In fact, it's super easy, and there's creation tools we can use to record our podcast right from the phone or computer. Wait, why would you record a podcast on your phone? You want, no, Never mind, never mind. Where do I put my money for this? Uh, I don't need any of your money. Uh, we can even get our podcast distributed to big streaming platforms like Spotify and Google Podcasts. Oh, I get it now. I get it now. We're talking big business here. Okay, so you're going to need a lot of money from me. How much money are we talking here? No, nope, no, nope, definitely don't need any of your money. In fact, we can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. Okay, now I think I'm getting what you're going at here. We need to spend money to make money. So we're, we're talking some big gains here. Big gains. No, no, definitely. No, I don't need any of your money. Just all we need to make a podcast right in one place. Okay, okay. So what you're telling me is that you're going to need a pretty big check from me for this podcast. So do I just make it out to cash? Because it's no problem for me. I'll just you know write it up right now. No. Listen, Dean, just head over to anchor.fm and check it out. You'll see why Anchor is the best place for us to record, edit, and distribute our podcasts. And I definitely do not need any of your money. Shut up and take my money. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Double Feature Podcast, second half, part two, do something. All right, so, um, David, we're talking about yesterday because Across the Universe was kind of a nothing burger, as you like to say. What do we got to say about yesterday? Uh, I thought a cute film. Very enjoyable. Um, a lot more premise driven. It, it has an enjoyable cast. And I think even plays to the spirit of the Beatles a little bit more. Um, in that the whole movie, the premise is that what if there was a world without the Beatles? Which even to the casual fan would be terrible. You know, these, yeah. they've authored some of the greatest songs ever. And a their world... influences are far and deep in modern culture and modern music. Yeah. And, you know, I was telling this to Dean before the episode, but I originally saw this movie in just like a bunch of strung together clips on YouTube. And then mm -hmm. it was until this that I finally actually saw the full thing come together. And it, it does remind me of one scene in particular that I thought really brings up the, the soul of the movie in that. And this is a little bit of a spoiler word alert technically this is one of the most recent movies to have come out i mean if you can't count pandemic so take that with a grain of salt but there's a couple other characters in the movie that you come to find also remember the world before no Beatles, 
after the accident. And I honestly thought that was a touching scene because um, mm-hmm. it then leads to like this kind of creepy deep fake of John Lennon, <laughs> which was... I mean... <sighs> it was handled okay, I think. I think a lot of these deep fakes are a little bit walking the line of inappropriate, but this one I was like, okay, it's... It's okay. I don't. You was know, that, it, it, was that a deep secrets. fake or was that an actual? Was that a deep fake or was that an actual like John Lennon impersonator under some makeup? Uh, you can kind of tell there's something deep. digital there, but it could also be an impersonator too. But uh, it's, even still, the re- the referencing it is a little. Yeah, I I do understand. It's a little mm, suspect. I I do. Uh, don't get me wrong. I get that you have to reference that idea only thing you also forget to visit the other three people <laughs> so part of me's like yeah. well i mean john Lennon wasn't the weird. only beetle <laughs> yeah and like also paul mccartney is actually still alive and you guys actually had to talk to him about this movie and apparently he actually enjoyed the script like you could have just had like you know Paul McCartney there. Oh yeah, you know I, I, I get why see, is John Lennon. I did see that there was an article somewhere when I was uh, you know looking at the movie that that said something to, along the lines of this is how the two surviving Beatles feel about yesterday. So I, Paul McCartney apparently then likes this. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. That, I... Is that is that it then? that's the extent what that they he just liked it or, well yeah no, I just, I i'd that, be interested um, to know what their feelings are on this type of movie or on this movie not just this type of movie from what i understand um paul mccartney because because everybody involved in all the beatles you know george harrison's estate um john lennon's estate paul ringo you know the surviving beatles and the families of the non-surviving beatles all gave the movie their blessing because they all had to like write off you know, yes on the script um, and they all gave it their blessing. They all seem to really enjoy it, mm. uh, the film. Um, so, yeah, no, the film, they liked the movie. That's From good. everything I've heard and understand about it. They probably yeah. wouldn't have actually been able to do it if they didn't like it, I guess, now that I think about it. Yeah. You Especially know. now um, that the Beatles music is, like, back in their estates and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, that was, like, uh, that was interesting for a while. Where it's like, wait, who owns the Beatles music? Michael Jackson. Really? Yeah. Michael Jackson owns the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, let's... Kind of um, weird world. Let's, real, really weird world we live in. But, yeah. So, I guess let's talk and about this the is an even weirder world. a little bit. Yeah. Which, also, I have I have questions about... About yesterday's um, premise a little bit. Little, 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 little teensy tiny questions. So, uh, yeah. are they saying... In a world without the Beatles, that Ed Sheeran, Coldplay, all these other acts exist? So this is kind of the interesting thing, right? Certain acts still exist, like Rolling Stones obviously exists. And obviously then, by extension, pretty much every other British Invasion band still happen, I'm sure. Like The Who, like... um, Well, they mentioned David Bowie, they meant... Yeah. Well, they mentioned David Bowie, they mentioned The Doors, they mentioned The Who, they mentioned those people by name. And yeah. then it's like it's also like other weird things just don't exist in this world. Like Coke, yeah. like Coca-Cola doesn't exist or cigarettes. And, and cigar- I was like, "Really? Cigarettes?" That one make- I was that, like, "What? That doesn't make any sense." <laughs> Which is I I don't know if that was a if that was meant to just be a joke with like no fact round on it or or what but that's like a really weird thing right yeah because like in my mind i'm like cigarettes existed before the beatles and certainly in meteoric fashion like the tobacco industry was huge in america is it that cigarettes never got the tobacco industry was like the backbone of american the american economy for like a long time yeah well it, during the early forming of it but so yeah. i guess the implication is that cigarettes never got popular in england because of the beatles not existing i, I don't or, or you know i don't know if thing that's I, even the thing maybe if it's like oh like what i chalk it up to baby is like and i do like this uh, this attempt by danny boyle to like bring up these questions because i think it adds texture to the world 
and strengthens strengthens the idea of the premise a little bit because you know Coca Cola not existing, cigarettes not existing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what what the Beatles were that important? I thought after a certain point maybe the implication is that several very important things within history just don't exist, and the Beatles happen to be one of these. Yeah, things. no, that's like, exactly what I. Because you know there are they do and Oasis and that's exactly what I pulled from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, because like I think the Oasis one is first because he that's when he's going on his googling spree and I'm like, okay, that makes sense because they seem directly influenced by the Beatles. But then it's like never that it's kind of like it's one of those things where it's not mentioned in dialogue, so it's like kind of loosely uh, explored. Um. It's kind of a weird thing, but also kind of an interesting thing to think about, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think it is an interesting premise that the movie is, is playing with. And then it also, like, okay, putting on pretentious guy hat here, art house hat coming on, bam. It feels like this movie is talking a lot about, like, influence and, like, where do artists artist gaining influence and where's the line between expressing that influence and plagiarism and are you really plagiarizing anything if no one knows what the influence is yeah is that is that a question coming up in this movie like is that a like a th- the main thematic like boiling point of this film that and maybe like inspiration as well um mm-hmm. which i i'm sure influence plays a partial role in that because the Ed Sheeran angle combined with the original music that Jack has all put together this like interesting exploration of that. Where the, his original music, Summer Song and th- tracks like this, which are to shit. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I know I've known plenty of musicians like this and have worked with plenty of musicians like this where like their songwriting talent really is as bad as it is like here in this intro with summer song mm-hmm. i've seen worse and it's it's true it's totally true and i actually really like that about this movie that they bring that up and make that this guy's weakness um because and i think this is certainly what those people's problems were they lack influence they lack the thing that the beatles did which was at first you know songs like i hold i want to hold your hand it's very simple but still a little bit they get what they're trying to write about um, and I think that's kind of the two prongs to what Jack is missing is he's mic- missing genuine, uh, inspiration as well as understanding for what makes a good song. And then this is kind of a thing that every musician and really every artist goes through. But when you study the masters, you start to learn what makes, what makes something capable of being mastery work. And mm-hmm. Maybe that's part part of what inspires this journey for anybody, not just specifically a guy who, I mean, really plagiarizes the Beatles music. (laughs) Um, Which, again, I also like that they reference that and make him guilty for. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he he also feels... It's interesting because he's enjoying the success, but he does feel genuinely guilty that he's just stealing the Beatles music. Yeah, and... Especially because I think he's worried that he will be caught in the lie because it's too good to be true, which there's certainly validity to that there. And for a while, I do think that the movie, the movie does a good job of dressing that up for even you to be like, oh, wow, this, what if this is really some like weird matrix prank that he's about to be <laughs> blown up on that? I mean, you know, it's kind of funny that, that they do that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I also take into question, and this is one of the things I thought you were going to take into question, the way in which the whole thing happens. I mean, that, like, weird solar flare anomaly. I haven't the foggiest idea what's going on there. Because that's the point of the movie where you're like, okay, we need a logical explanation why the Beatles don't exist right in modern in the modern world i i chalk it up to magic or aliens both are valid yeah i figured it was like coming on the backs of because this seems also like a very specky script 
Mm -hmm. um, considering our our comment we made last episode on Head Over Heels. I feel like this was coming on the back of that like Mandela effect meme that everybody was into. Because that uh, oh, that's ex yeah. almost exactly like what this is. I mean, and I, I think there's valid play there, but yeah, I mean, and maybe I, it it would become a, almost borderline science fiction if we were to actually figure out like how exactly the world got rid of the Beatles, Coca Cola, and cigarettes in one fell yeah. swoop. But um, with which or I how guess one man can really... eat that many tuna sandwiches. Yeah, I, I get your point. I guess it really doesn't doesn't matter too much to the story at hand because it shows up and then, you know, we just get going on to the plot, onto the like the yeah. rest of the story. And it's it, this is also just a really nice love story, right? Between Jack yeah, and Ellie. I, I do I really do like the love story in this because I, I almost like this is my own fault for getting annoyed at it, but I do get annoyed sometimes when movies like the only obstacle in the way of the relationship ends up being ego. And it's like, no, you can't be with me. But I think there's a level of truth to that sometimes in that we can let our ego get in the way of um, love and relationships. And I think that movie that does that very well in balancing the idea that you cannot be successful beyond your wildest dreams and not sacrifice some of those relationships, especially because he doesn't want to, but it's like, yeah, I mean, physically you can't be in Suffolk and in, in Los Angeles at the same time. Um, you know, it, it would, if you, if you were to bring her with you, the whole thing would change. So it's, it is a little bit like, I like that the movie brings that up as a, a reason i do i it's, i don't know how you feel about the ending of the movie uh i mean in the way it resolves that which afterward is where, good the, the climax is a little i don't know well okay the the thing i i want to bring up about their like relationship thing in that building is i think ellie is completely right about about jack and their like relationship because She's been in love with him forever, and she's like, it's taking you this long to even figure out you might have romantic feelings for me, and I am so not okay with that. She's like, I thought, like, you had a crush on me like I had on you, and you just didn't want to take the first shot, and now I figured out I was in the, I've been in the friend column for 20 years? No. This is not okay. And she's like mad at him, and it, it's it's interesting because I think that's a very um, a very interesting character point for Ellie, right? And it also explains a lot of like the things she does in this movie. Um, but yeah, but about that ending, I thought the ending was fine. I thought the climax was cool, where he you know does the concert and then he releases all the music to, out to the people, you know. But um. Yeah, I thought the ending where he's just singing to the to the school. I thought it was cute. I don't think it was bad. Yeah, I, I think like I mean it wraps itself up. Yeah, it just certainly wraps itself up. I, I don't know. I maybe it's like just me and that the ending feels a little bit like, well, what else is there left to do? Because how insane would it really be to be like the biggest musician in the world and then all of a sudden be like my music was written by these four people you've never heard of and not that you would really care anyway. And frankly, they, as far as you know, they don't exist. So I sound really crazy right now and listen to my songs still. And people are going to be like, no, shut up. We just want you to keep going. Um, They're just looking at each other like, is or is he just coming off a Coke binge? Or yeah. Is that and what's then going on here? Ellie too is going to be like, well, I don't know if I trust this guy who thinks the made up people in his head wrote all this music that he obviously wrote sticky notes for in his room i don't know it, it, it's a little i think it's oh, there's a smidgen of far-fetchedness in it um but you know it's like yeah i guess the the moral of the story is more what i like i guess which i know is kind of stuck up -ish of me but uh i don't i don't think so i think that's kind of what the movie is trying to get at you know yeah the 
it's one of those things where it's a nice simple story with a with a you know a really high concept premise but overall it's a simple story the rise of a of the musician kind of like him realizing he can only be happy by going back home you know once he reaches fame he knows he doesn't really want it and it's a simple enough story but i think the moral of it is really what makes this movie interesting yeah because i also think that um the journey to this movie is a little bit more important in that yeah. every 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 bit that this movie explores about musicianship i think is spot on from like having to record in a small tiny little room or with a train going by or whatever it is you know it's really buttering your buns that day um mm-hmm to like finding real success and people actually liking your creations and um even to even to finding like genuine connection with other people over like the creation of the art not just the popularity of the art and mm-hmm. which is kind of i think the purpose of that scene with the two people who realize or who remember the beatles from before um Plus, I also really enjoy. I I said it before, but I really enjoyed the renditions of the songs in this a lot more, uh, because I think I think they capture the energy of the original a lot more and don't pander so much to trying to outdo the original. Yeah. Also, something interesting about this. So, um, I think a big reason why you might have liked it, um, the performance is because it's very genuine. Because the actor playing Jack. Uh, I'm, I hope I don't butcher his name. Himish Patel. That's yeah. him actually singing and performing like the instruments. Yeah. Like, it, he's actually doing that. Very which it, is cool. Which talented of him. Certainly very great voice to do so. And um, that's kind of the beauty about Beatles songs too, is I think there's a simplicity to them that, that would make that a little easier to do versus something else. I mean, okay. What's the implication of the Beatles that this guy can just remember every Beatles song off the top of his head and recreate them because they're all that simple. I I, I think that's because it's interesting. I have back in my, one of my bookcases behind me, a song book of all the Beatles songs. Uh, mm-hmm. Every song they've written is in that book that I could look up. And it's not like tablature or like sheet music for them. It's literally just the chords to their songs because that's kind of how simple they are. Uh, from like the earlier boy band stuff when it was literally three, four, five chord songs that were meant to be like radio hits to their later more expensive experimental stuff. The music theory there is a, is very chord driven, um, sometimes a little bit more melodic, melodic, but uh, even still, I think that's kind of the genius is that they take very simple things and then make it unique. Um, yeah. I think what is it? That's what they say about um, masters of their craft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a hack will make something simple really complicated, and a genius will make something very complicated sound very simple. Uh, yeah, I would say that's exactly it. That's a really good point, and that that is your music appreciation minute on the Double Feature podcast. Ah, we're glad you were here for it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like, I guess we can kind of keep going on about like yesterday. Because at the end of the day, it's a love story. It's very cute. Mm. There's a lot of like weird celebrity cameos in this. Ed Sheeran is a character in this movie, like I actual like Ed Sheeran. I, I, I was. I think it actually was not that bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just kind of weird. A little, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Also, the songwriting contest where Ed Sheeran is like, you know, they always said there was going to come a songwriter that was better than me but I guess I finally found it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Do people think Ed Sheeran is one of the greatest songwriters of all time? Is that a thing? Yeah, that's, that's a little lofty. I, I certainly think. I think he's a talented songwriter, certainly, because he's unique. Yo, yeah, he's he's hella more talented than I am. I'll give yeah. him that damn much. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, it is a little, I know what you mean there. <laughs> look, look, Ed Sheeran, if you ever listen to this, no matter how much shade I throw at you, your money eclipses all my achievements in life. You won. Yeah, no kidding. But I, I especially also, I, I love the, the back in the USSR scene and then the subsequent song battle. I, I think so. Because it also makes, 
it continues the 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 reason of the premise and that it, it adds a challenge to it 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 makes the cameo actually mean something within the movie mm. um yeah i don't know I, I think that's an interesting note to make about this is that this isn't just relying on the beatles stuff is it really makes a story out of the character and it it puts it, its money where its mouth is in those moments yeah it's also kind so. of in it's it's just an interesting little movie and it's kind of strange because this movie didn't actually wasn't like super successful when it came out which is strange yeah i i I heard a lot of buzz about it when it came out um i was recommended by my aunt who was a actual fan of the beatles when it was appropriate to be a fan of the beatles (laughs) or not that it isn't appropriate now but you know Um, yeah i get what you mean she has given me an original pressing of, let's see, Hard Day's Night. Oh, really? It's beat okay. to shit, but it's an original pressing. I, I got the same beat to shit copy of the White Album. Lovely. Lovely yes. albums. Um, but yeah, um, I, I kind of want to bring bring this up because the movie, so... it. <sighs> Because the movie wasn't that successful, right? Because I heard this got a lot of, like, it got panned by a lot of critics. The turnout wasn't awesome for the movie. But uh, for Across the Universe, it... Across the Universe made, like, bank. Which is so weird. So weird, I think. Yeah. Well, oh, actually... Oh, what the hell? Oh my god, my the Mandela effect has, has taken hold of me. So apparently, Cross the Universe was a f- huge fucking flop. <laughs> That's not surprising. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm. I remember Across the Universe being huge. Is that just me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah. Fuck. I remember fuck a lot too. of people who so... were like into this this type of film were the right people, and that they are super into the film. Yeah, that might have been it because this movie came out in '07. Yeah, and it seems like it should have come out years before that for some reason, but I I will admit, too, the quality of some of those sequences and, like, the the camera, the footage of it all, I think it's good. I think it's good for the time and, 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 you know, all that, but um, I don't know. I, 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 I would be interested to know then, on the opposite side of that Mandela effect memory, that apparently isn't true, what... Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay, so before we I go into that, so um across the universe, estimated budget forty five million, and its accumulative worldwide gross was like thirty million. I this movie came out in two thousand seven. I was like uh, middle school, high school, something like that. I remember everyone at my school was digging the shit out of this movie. Yeah, I guess, like the people I knew. Granted, I was like in music and shit, so it wouldn't surprise me if I just was in that the right crowd for it to be big yeah but i remember this like a lot of people having this in their dvd collection a lot of people like watching this movie that's fucking weird but okay and then the yesterday yeah the mandela effect is all over the place estimated for um yesterday is 26 million grossed 150 million i'm fuck i am see that's what i remember i remember i do remember it being kind of a big hit because uh, I also remember this is one of the movies that actually made uh, Himesh Patel a huge star. Like, now I would consider him to be, like, a pretty big star. And this movie was just... Well, I, I, actually, yeah, it was a pre-COVID time movie. So, yeah, this is, like, two years ago. Yeah. That... This is... This is weird. I'm... I'm lost for words. Himesh Patel's in Tenet? What the fuck? Yeah, dude. You didn't know that? No. I think he's on the, he's on the cover. No, no, wait, he's not on the cover. No, else. no, yeah. But no, he's in, like, all the trailers. Interesting. I, don't, I so, really yeah. gotta check out that movie. I still have not seen it. Though, for interesting Himesh Patel uh, fans, there's a there's a short film that's on this YouTube channel, Amaletto. Uh, a really, it, it has a, it's basically, like, a, it feels like they want to be a streaming service for short films, but it's just that they're really a curator of a bunch of them. But a lot of really quality ones find their way on uh, on their way to the channel. And he stars in this one. It's like a romantic comedy where he's trying to introduce 
uh, Indian culture to the girl he's going out with, but he's English and he has honestly next to nothing, no knowledge about Indian culture. I recommend it. Mm-hmm. To, I don't. I don't know the title off the top of my head, but go looking for it. I recommend that, and I really hope to see more out of Mesh Patel because I, I enjoy him. Oh yeah, honestly, after watching him in yesterday, Two doses, and that's what it's called. That's what it's called. Oh, perfect. Yeah. But yeah, so honestly, after watching me yesterday, I think yesterday has a lot of great performances. Um, I guess I guess this is the part where we have to just compare the two films. So yesterday, great performances, love story. It's an actual structured movie. Um, across the universe, it's big, it's fun, it's you know a jukebox musical. The love story is a little whatever. You're getting some weird like history stuff involved, but I think it's a pretty good movie if you just want to just put it on and just listen to some songs and watch some cool visuals. Because I think the visuals in Across the Universe are very interesting. Yeah. Um, I would probably agree with that assessment in that the only thing I would say about this double feature is I almost feel like now, looking back on it, because the only other movies that really you could think of uh, of the Beatles is like there's Yellow Submarine, which we don't want to give you nightmares. Um, <laughs> I've seen that on sixteen mil. Yeah, there's Magical Mystery Tour, which is its own separate thing. <laughs> yeah, that movie is not great. There's the classic Hard Day's Night, which is actually a great movie um, and kind of pioneering its own way. I would say that would be the one you want to pair yesterday with overall, and you probably want to put across the universe in the magical mystery tour, Yellow Submarine <laughs> camp. Uh, maybe Yellow Submarine. Like I feel like across the universe is I okay because these movies are very like unique in what they're trying to do, and it's like I think both of these on their own are very enjoyable watches. And I think that gets us to the question is who's going to seek out these movies. Who's going to want to watch them. Yeah. So I think any Beatles fan is going to enjoy them. Absolutely. Yeah. A, a Beatles if, fan would love these movies. Other than that, across the universe is probably only for the Beatles fan. Whereas I feel like yesterday, if you're not quite so into the Beatles or something, it's still a very good movie for you. I think. A hundred and fifty million dollars says so. So you know. Eh. Yeah, I I would I would agree with that. I think if you're just looking for a pretty good roman romantic comedy ish musical kind of film, you can't really do go bad with yesterday. It's very fun, very good. You'll really enjoy it. Yeah, across the universe is just weird. It's almost in the Rocky Horror section of musicals where it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you can kind of enjoy the music. But Rocky Horror is way better. I mean, come Rocky on. Horror is way better. Yeah, Rocky Horror is actually great. I saw that at a drive-in not too long ago. Yeah, but yeah, you get my point. Certainly. So, I guess that can kind of bring us bring us to the end here. You have you have a double feature for the Beatles fans in your life. Pretty much. Oh, so David. Where can people find us if they wanted to listen to more stuff? Well, if you throwing want, it to you this time, if you want to listen to more stuff uh, along with some more Beatles stuff, you could find us on places like Spotify, or probably not other any podcast service to listen to the Beatles, but you can find us there, such as Google Podcasts, uh, Radio Public, and others. Um, in order to find us on YouTube, you can find us at In the Frame. We post this and our other podcast, uh, Too Obscure for TV, on there. And if you want to find us on Instagram, we're at double underscore feature podcast. Uh, you can follow us along and we post interesting little graphics to keep up with everything. Um, and yeah, follow us on any of those platforms and be ready for next week when we're going to be getting, continuing along with our uh, romance month. It's going to be another interesting pair that I will pull up in a minute. Oh, don't worry. I already got them. Oh, what so the pairs you? that exactly the pair that we're coming up with for next week, the third week of romantic February is actually some of the older films we will be reviewing, which is bringing up baby and the apartment, mm, a which couple of classics. Yes, indeed. And I think this is the first black and white double feature of the year. 
No, because, well, okay, yeah, double feature, yes, but I believe if we were to qualify uh, for its black and white feature... That would have been Pass of Glory, right? Quite. But it is, inter yes. you know, I'm very excited to get into some older classic movies. Um, I think that's an underserved part of my filmography. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, I think we've, we're have we going to be hitting plenty this year, and I'm excited to get into these two to start that. Oh, yep. And we can't wait to see everybody next week at the double feature picture show to watch Bring Your Baby and The Apartment. Yes. All right. Certainly. Indeed. <sighs> well, un <laughs> until next time, Dean, I got a ticket to ride, and I don't care. I'll see you then. I, I've run out of my Beatles stuff for the week. Eh, whatever. Peace. Alright, see ya.